we're going to start learning first about uh, starch. Now, uh, starch is a uh, polymer of glucose. So the entire molecule is made up of glucose. Uh, starch itself is made up of two types of... You have one type of chain is called amylose. Amylose is made up of glucose molecules all attached. As you can see, it has like spiral shape. Uh, nonetheless, uh, all of those glucoses are attached to each other in the same way. So it's like nothing but glucoses attached in a linear form. But due to the position, due to the presence of hydrogen bonds, once again, uh, the OH and H between glucoses, the molecule of amylose, it forms what we call like a spiral shaped long polysaccharide. All right. Uh, but starch is not only amylose because starch is also another type of molecule called amylopectin. So amylopectin. Uh, where is amylopectin made up of? More or less like amylose chains. They're linear, but every now and then you do get some branches like here, here, here. Now, like what's the point of having two molecules in starch. So it's like why starch is a combination of amylose and amylopectin. The reason is each one of those molecules provides one great advantage. So let's talk about amylose first. What's the point of being spiral, linear? The whole point here is being spiral, uh, meaning that it would occupy less space inside the cell. So it's like to coil a molecule rather than being linear would save space inside the cell. Plant cells are quite keen to store as much energy in as little space as possible. So that's one great advantage of amylose. What about amylopectin? What's the point of having the branched molecule in amylopectin? The whole point here is because uh, this molecule got to be digested at some point. So there's not the energy is not going to be stored forever. At some point, the energy has to be taken out from this amylopectin. Being branched is great uh, for the cell because instead of being only able to die take glucoses from two sides here i end up having many positions for glucose to be eaten or another way to be taken away and used to release energy so branches in amylopectin provides accessibility for enzymes so let's say there was an enzyme here uh, amylose, uh, amylase is the enzyme to digest starch. So when amylase is to break down uh, amylopectin, you got plenty of positions to be digested, and that provides more energy in less space. So again, starch is a combination of two molecules. Each has its properties. One of them is amylose, which save space and the other one is a amylopectin which provides more glucoses to be digested at once. Structure wise, uh, how does amylose form and how does amylopectin uh, form? So in case of amylose, amylose the chains uh, of glucoses are attached in a linear form. So take a look here where I have I have uh, those glucoses and as you can see every two glucoses will attach form a bond in the same way we saw in disaccharides, so you just take away OH, NH, oxygen remains here and join. So every two adjacent glucoses will do more or less the same thing. And where we end up with here, we will end up having plenty of this one, four glycosidic bonds between those glucoses. So again, uh, my amylose, the only bond that you have between the glucoses is the one, four, uh, glycosidic bond. So that's that's amylose. That's how amylose is like linear shaped molecule which helps to save space because soon it will coil on itself and occupy less volume inside the cell. Uh, remember uh, starch is two things. So starch is not only amylose, this one, uh, starch is also amylopectin. How does amylopectin Form. In amylopectin, the, another glucose comes along. So now we're drawing amylopectin. So another glucose comes along. So this is my other glucose here. And this time it attaches itself at the position of sixth carbon. So where is carbon number six here? 
that is carbon number six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And carbon number one from this glucose, so the OH here and the OH here, those are going to condense and form a glycosidic bond. How is this glycosidic bond forming? So I'm just going to put it just like this here, right? And I'm just going to put it sideways to show you how the bond forms. So the OH here, OH here, will remain with an oxygen right here. And this helps to join these glucoses and form a branch. Now, perhaps this is a bit messy, so I'm going to show you another example. So I have another example here, clearer. So that's my glucoses. Remember, this is amylose here, linear. The, o, the OHs in those glucoses, what will they do? They will attach by hydrogen bonds. And those hydrogen bonds is what makes amylose a spiral shaped molecule so that's amylose the spiral form of starch uh what about amylopectin so that's linear shaped molecule but check this one out this oh here this oh here they're gonna attach how are they gonna attach they're gonna attach by means of glycosidic bond and the glycosidic bond now is gonna form a branch amylopectin remember it's a branch molecule the Name of the bond here. Now, since this is carbon number six, this is carbon number one. So the glycosidic bond is going to be called one six glycosidic bond. So again, amylopectin is branched molecule. Uh, you have many glucoses. Uh, check this, this, this. All of these glucoses are available all at once. So that's great advantage for the cell to uh, get access to all of these glucoses, rich with energy to provide, to release energy for the cell.